Coral reefs are essential for fisheries, tourism, not to mention protecting against coastal erosion and storms. They also help develop life-saving treatment for leukemia and other diseases. But they're under threat. So I went on a research dive to see what's being done to help. It's 6 a.m. off the coast of Puerto Rico, and Dr. Stacy Williams is on a rescue mission, preparing her scuba gear and plenty of waterproof bags before she and fellow scientist Katie Flynn dive in to save precious baby sea urchins called diadema. My producer Jackie and I secured our cameras. We're ready to go see some diadema. And dove in right behind them. Their mission, clipping these lines of squares of AstroTurf-esque material, where hard to see tiny baby urchins hide, clinging on for their literal life in this underwater science lab. So they're not able to either settle or survive settlement. The really tiny babies are eaten. Swimming along underwater with them and a surprise barracuda, it's easy to tell why. With bags stuffed full, we resurface. The water, almost uncomfortably warm, was impossible to ignore. And that's the problem. Not just here. Sea surface temperatures around the world are breaking records nearly every day. The North Atlantic, for example, is currently on average warmer than any other time on record. That rippling underwater heat places stress on these colorful colonies, robbing them of their trademark color and places them at risk of dying off. We just got out of the water and it's hot today. The water itself is 86 degrees, just a few degrees more, and that's when coral enters the risk zone for bleaching. On top of the bleaching risk, toxic algae thrives in warm water, threatening the coral even more. But Easter Caribe's research shows that these urchins are nature's own cleaners for the coral. They're like the goats or the cows of the sea. We've seen uh, a significant reduction in um, both uh, fleshy, bushy, you know, seaweed to encrusting seaweed um, that can actually overgrow and kill live coral tissue. Her team rushes the tick-sized baby urchins to their one-of-a-kind land-based nursery. Keeps everything alive and looking well. Here, they're nurtured in tubs set up like bunk beds alongside faded and bleached coral fragments in need of recovery. When they lose that color, they basically lose most of their nutrient intake. The skeleton becomes weak and it becomes much more susceptible to disease. It sounds like this lab operates mainly as a nursery, but also as a rehab center. Yeah, I like to call this like a very fancy hotel, so we make sure we come here and they're in the best conditions they can be in. A lot of scientists all over the world are experimenting, making corals that are more resilient, more resistant. Their research in Puerto Rico is unique when it comes to materials. Living on an island, we are constrained to what is available and also our budgets. Forks for maneuvering the urchins carefully, a turkey baster to keep their coral hydrated, and livestock troughs for tubs. Our nurseries are actually on solar. We need to keep these animals alive. We've come up with ways to uh, use these materials because running these type of facilities is very expensive. Once both the urchins and coral have grown a bit and are healthy, they're ready to go back into the ocean. We helped the urchins nestle into their new homes and saw the researchers' success firsthand. Replanted corals settling into the reef and full-grown adult diadema urchins effectively keeping them clean. Their strength working together showcased underwater to protect life on shore. As someone who's an avid scuba diver with deep respect for everything that lives in the ocean, this was such a fascinating assignment. The other thing I found intriguing, these researchers in Puerto Rico have developed a consortium to help inspire and map out blueprints to help other marine labs around the country. Back to you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.